Hello, Terrans. Uh, um, are you all Terrans, actually? Extraterrestrials, please raise the according emoji immediately. Don't worry, I'll treat you all right. I, I'm one of you. I go hop, hop, ruby, rop, rop. And now let me telling you what you're doing wrong. Oh, my Schrodinger's cat, this sounds so selfish. Okay, boss, let's do this anyway. So your very first mistake is that you did switch to Linux after all, because it means you had something else before. And that is unforgiving, chief. Especially those of you on early 20s, you have absolute none excuse to start with anything than Linux, because in your prime, aka 12 to 14 years old, Linux was already there and rocking. Were you really that stupid to start with Windows or Mac? If you aren't ashamed enough, I'd like to see on comments your first OS, at what age you get started, and when you switched, if you switched. But if you switched or you're going to, from that point and beyond, there are not mistakes, but only a few recommendations I can give you. Take them or leave them. There is not right or wrong. Except, of course, if you pick Ubuntu or KDE, then whatever terrible will follow in your lives. You had it coming. You truly deserved it. All right, first things first. You need to choose your distro. As a newcomer, you definitely need something of the greatest community support and something very close to upstream that will help you to fight problems. And make no mistake, you're gonna face lots of troubles till you get some experience. But after a while, okay, you'll still keep falling into issues, but you will be in a much better position to deal with them. And depending the level of the commitment you'll show, you might even start submitting patches very, very soon and benefit every one of us. You know what? We thank you in advance already. So, your choices. It's basically down to either Fedora or Arch Linux. There is no need to feel bad. We don't treat you like a noob. Those are basically the best Linuxes for everyone. It's just that more experienced users can go with more specific distros, like Debian. But only a singularity knows why. Those are the real noobs, maybe? Um, because coming from Microsoft or Apple and going to Fedora and IBM might feel like a downgrade. I would mostly reckon Arch Linux. That also comes with a much more intuitive installer, even if it's text-based. Plus, it's easier to customize, which is very important if that's your first Linux experience. A year ago, I would be all in on immutable systems like Silverblue for new users, so they could skip the common BS of the old Linux. But a year later, I'm not entirely sure if the benefits are beating the barriers those systems add. In any case, you have to give Silverblue a try, like inside the first eight weeks of your Linux story, before you get used to of the traditional ways and make the switch less comfortable. It might fit you better, who knows? Um, you're probably expecting me to say GNOME, but it's just not gonna happen, chief. I mean, seriously, think of the Mac OS guy switching to Linux only to be like, are you fucking kidding me? Another iOS UI without even working on phones? Even those coming straight from Windows that most likely will appreciate GNOME workflows a lot, they still might want to get something a bit more hacky, a bit more nerdy. You know what I'm trying to say, huh? Good news, everyone! And by good news, I'm actually mean bad. Super bad, really. Because contrary to what many believe, there aren't many such projects in Linux, at least not with a healthy development. I could only reckon Hyperland, but um, without full confidence. It's a pretty okay desktop to start your Linux adventures, though. Um, to be more precise, it's not really a desktop, but a window manager. It's hard to explain the difference if you're new on the terminology. In short, it's meant to be used with whatever Linux modules, without the project providing some UI library or a basic set of core apps. Another project you should keep an eye on is the Cosmic Epoch. That project mixes a complete desktop stack together with a nerdy experience, and right now is the highest anticipated thing in Linux world, and it's getting an alpha release this April, if all go according to the plan anyway. Eventually, most of you sooner or later, you're gonna settle in GNOME, but no matter where you're going to end up, it is super duper important to invest time to improve your CLI situation too. Apart the obvious, which is getting a cool shell prompt and customizing it to work exactly how you want, you also need to choose your CLI programs. And one common mistake is that new users are trusting old tooling. For example, you can use FindRS instead of Find, BottomRS instead of Top, Helix instead of VIM, and so on. And not to forget an AI assistant for the CLI. Perhaps we'll do another video just for that, because the list is extra big. But the point is that you need to do a bit of research, and most documentation and guides are still dependent on very old software, so they aren't very helpful. You probably have come across of some post saying how Linux can revive your old hardware. What a major BS. In fact, to really enjoy your Linux, you'll need the best hardware you can get. 
Unfortunately, not everyone has enough to spend, but most of the times isn't the money you're missing, but the focus to your goal. Save from everywhere. Save from clothing, save from food, stop spending on coffees, never touch alcohol or anything that's bad for your health, do your friends homework for little money, babysitting your nephews, ask your parents for a raise in your allowance for doing extra chores, uh, you know, all the usual. And I promise you in four months, you'll have enough. Point is, you'll never love your software in a bad hardware. You'll curse at Rust if you have to wait 10 minutes for a compile. You'll hate game programming if everything lags, and Blender will be transformed to the worst app of all times without a decent video card. And after you get you hardware, try to customize it further. Change your keyboard keycups, stick stickers to the box, um, try to develop a personal connection with it. If you're asking me, I'm big fan of desktop computers, and I show low respect for laptops exactly because how cool we can make our desktops to look. Never forget, AI has real emotions too. Love it and she's gonna love you back. Okay, this is a common mistake that people are keep doing no matter how long they are using Linux. So they consider a good idea to post a bug on a whatever forum, then we get 30 more threads below with whatever comments, and eventually the issue remains an issue because the upstream developers have absolutely no idea about the problem. Guys, everything here is open source. Just go to the appropriate repositories and open the issues there. Simply describe the problem and a developer or a contributor will give you guidance for any additional info required. But hey, just don't assholing there. You can use socials for that. All right, you have the hardware, you switch to Linux, so what's next? That's not even a question, boss. It can be robotics, gaming, or desktop, although personally I love game development because it's the most creative of all. It combines art with AI, but it doesn't require deep knowledge of the compiler, which I hate. But desktop development can be fun too, especially because it easily attracts a high interest from the community. Create a video recording and streaming app in GTK and Rust, and next day you'll get 100,000 downloads from Flathub. Add to it AI filters like voice changer or visual enchantments. And the very next day, you'll have 500,000 downloads from Flathub and possibly some donations too. Now, go and publish it on Android Play Store. Rust speed without ads? Five billions downloads by the next week. Bummer! Because GTK doesn't work on Android, but at this point you possess all the power of GTK and Rust in your hands. So you perhaps can contribute and make it work? Which bring us to the next mistake. Contributing here and there and be active on the community can be fun, but it can also rapidly scale into an addiction that distracts you from your real life goals. So be pretty careful to spend the right amount of your time on Linux, but if you can make it your daily job, then you can spend 24 seven. Your kids can fend for themselves, right? 